meetings. If they're interested in the meetings, they can always go to YouTube channel, Ms. Campbell and Friends. So, so excited about today. And um, I'm excited because I've been able to be consistent <laughs> with my weekly parent meetings. I was so worried about that. Um, I missed you all last Thursday, but I was enjoying the holidays with my family. And I do hope that you all were doing the same. So this is our weekly parent check-in. We do this every Thursday at 10 a.m. Um, if you don't have your calendars out, please grab your calendars. And I have some updates for you all. So our first update, our Zoom meetings will take place every Thursday. And our next one will take place on December 10th and December 17th. Also fourth grade, fourth grade will be receiving um, gifts from um, Mrs. Wilson's church. If you didn't know by now, Mrs. Wilson is a first lady. Her husband is a pastor. Um, and so her church always gives gifts to the fourth grade students. And the giveaway will take place next Thursday, December 10th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Also, Rock City Church. Yes, I am still having them host the shoe giveaway. It's taking a lot of brainstorming and trying to figure out how this can happen. I want to get these pictures down here. Yes, that's how I want it. Um, it's been taking a lot of brainstorming on how this will take place. But I think we have it together. We will do a drive through giveaway. That's right. So parents will need to be patient and wait in their car and cut the heat on and wait their turn for their child size to be given to Rock City Church volunteers. Um, I think I may do it on the playground just so the car line isn't as long, but I need to figure out how we're going to turn the cars around and bring them back out of the playground. We're going to have to figure something out so that um, people aren't on the street blocking the houses because it's so tight where our school is <laughs> located um, to do something like this, but I didn't want it to be where students wouldn't be able to receive their free shoes and they give out some pretty nice shoes and are giving out other gifts and this will take place either December 14th or December 15th and you all know that I will be calling you sending an email and it will be on the CCS app so if you do not have the CCS app downloaded please make sure that you have downloaded that app because whatever I email I send it through the app as well. Also, have you checked your email? On our last uh, parent meeting, I discussed the email and I also um, did a global call before Thanksgiving break about how to check your email. You go to ccsoffice.org and you put in your username and your password. So it's your student's username and their password. And if you haven't checked it, I guarantee you have over a thousand emails um, because one student checked it in their class where I was showing them an example and they did have over a thousand because there's been a lot of emails coming from myself, the classroom teachers, Google, their Google Classroom, when their teacher updates an assignment, it's sent through the email as well and the district sends email. So everything is updated through the email. If you have two students, I would suggest you checking their emails today. Also, early release and winter break begins on Friday, December 18th. So class will end early on Friday, December 18th. All right, so I'm super excited to announce that Parkmore has won the silver award for the Ohio PBIS awards for school year 2019-2020. And um, I am in my fifth year at Parkmore. My first year, there were quite a bit of behavior issues. In fact, I couldn't believe what I saw before my eyes of February, 2015. I said, oh, this is how they behave. <laughs> and so I actually suspended 96 students my first year. Um, I suspended 76 students my second year. And then my third year, it went down to 53 students. La, um, my fourth year, I suspended only um, 13 students, and last year, I only suspended two students. So um, the PBIS system really has worked out at our school. 
Um, I truly do believe it's because of consistency and because we have truly partnered with our parents. Now, I will say some of my parents aren't always on board. <laughs> um, they may see me as a little bit strict um, or feel as though um, it doesn't take all that, but it does because um, we have to understand that parents send their children to school for their child to learn and for their child's learning to not be taken away from them because of poor behavior. And so um, I love all of my students like I love my own child and I want the best for them. And in order for you to get the best education, you have to be focused and you have to have good behavior and good behavior is positive behavior. Um, and so we have some things in place that has truly, truly worked for all of our students. Um, is the school perfect? No, <laughs> no, it's not perfect. Do we still have some issues? Yeah, we have issues, but I'm not suspending kids. Children aren't spending all day in peak and children are able to voice when they have something to say as well. And as a result, we have a positive um, environment. And so our school will be recognized. We've won the bronze award for three years and now we're at silver. And this year we're going for the gold, which is the top award. And we will be recognized on Tuesday, December 15th during the Ohio PBIS recognition ceremony. So if you don't know what PBIS stands for, it's the positive behavioral interventions and supports. So it's an evidence-based three-tiered framework to improve and integrate all of the data systems and practices affecting student outcomes every day. So PBIS creates schools where all students can succeed. So we have tier one um, of PBIS and that's where you have your Campbell's cash. You might hear students talk about that. We have our peak free parties. We have our uh, Panther heads and tier one is where all students can receive this. They receive shout outs. Um, some of them get to eat lunch with me or they have lunch bunch with um, their teacher. And then you have tier two. And that is for students who may need um, a little bit more support. Um, they may be spending more time in peak during the week. They may be um, not uh, following the expectations in class. So we give them a little bit more support at tier two. And so that's where principal's lunch bunch comes in, girls with pearls. Um, Moiler Mondays or um, our boys group or St. Vincent's social behavior group. Those are tier two. And then we have some students who are in the red, which is our tier three supports. And this is where they receive one-on-one -on -one support from Directions for Youth. We may even have a behavior specialist come in to help us identify some strategies we can use with students. Some students have been referred to Buckeye Ranch. We may also refer students for some um, family counseling. Um, and so thank you, thank you, um, whoever is on Galaxy tab for the congratulations. And so we don't have a lot of students um, in tier three, but we are glad to have tier three available. And I'm thankful for parents for being on board because before it used to be almost taboo or um, parents didn't wanna talk about it if their child was in tier three or if their child needed a behavior plan. It was almost looked as though something is wrong with my child. No, 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 that is not the case. It just means that there may need to be some extra supports so that your child can be successful academically. At the end of the day, that's what it's about is finding the strategies and the supports so that your child can be successful um, during um, their classroom instruction time. And so we have our secretary, Miss Cindy just joined us. I'm super excited because Miss Cindy hasn't joined us for one of our meetings. So hopefully her camera is working today. And so I wanna share with you all um, our PBIS matrix that we use and all of the students receive this matrix in class. So I am going to exit out of my presentation and pull up our matrix. So as you can see here on our matrix, we have some common areas. These are the expectations and these are the common areas, transportation, hallway. Uh-oh, it's not where I wanna be. Transportation, hallway, 
classroom, restrooms, lunchroom, and playground. So all of these areas up here are considered common areas. These are all of the areas that students um, will interact in um, during the school day. But for the virtual setting, we focus just on the classroom. So you'll see high blighted in the teal color are the areas we've added for virtual, but highlighted in the gold is for virtual and face-to-face. -face. So our first expectation is for students to think win-win, to seek first to understand, then to be understood and synergize. So one of our parents, if you want to come off mute, do you know what these are over here on the far left in this area under expectations. If we want students to think win-win, seek first to understand, then to be understood and synergize, what are these here? Anyone? Anyone remembers? I know someone has to remember. These are the seven habits. So we are still emphasizing our seven habits with our students. So in order for them to reach these three habits, they need to use kind words and actions, use the communication rule as needed, respect the ideas of others, respect other people's property. But here in the virtual setting, technology issues will be resolved with the help from an adult. And so we added that because some of our students they were getting very frustrated with their Chromebooks because either the Chromebook wasn't working um, or the sound or the video. So they were disrupting class in the middle of a session and say, my computer isn't working. They would come off mute and get so upset. So we had to put something in place where the students can type in the chat or to go and get an adult to help them with the um, technology so they're not interrupting class. And I mean, it's quite natural, you know, even when our computers aren't working, we're like, what's going on? You know, you want your computer to work. Um, so that you are able to complete your assignments. And especially during classroom instruction, um, if a child's video goes out, they feel as though they're not able to learn um, what's taking place. And that could be the case. And so we wanna make sure at all times they understand that an adult is always going to be there to help them with their technology. And then the last piece for this expectation is finding a quiet place to work with minimal distractions and stay put. And we added this to our PBIS matrix because we were finding that some students were taking their computers and navigating through their house. They would go in the living room, then they would go in the kitchen, then they would go up to their bedroom, and then they're going into their sibling's bedroom. And this was a major distraction during instruction time because the other kids are watching their square like it's a movie, <laughs> you know, all eyes is on this child that is navigating through their home. And we want the children to stay put with minimal distractions because some of the older brothers and sisters, they're like poking a child, they're hitting, playing tag, they're bringing them a toy. And that again is another distraction um, to the other students in the class. And so we're just asking parents, we know that some parents are working from home and this could be a little difficult. We do understand that. But as much as possible, remind your children every day that they should not be bothering each other while each of them is in class. Also, no toys should be out. And we're asking that TVs are turned off because we have some students who have their televisions blaring in the background. Um, if you can believe it or not. Cartoons playing, or um, I've been in some classrooms and witnessed it myself where the parent is actually watching TV with the TV loud and they're laughing or they're talking about the show. And I can't control what goes in someone else's classroom. I can only give a suggestion, I mean, someone else's home. I can only give a suggestion, but it is very distractive when a parent is in the background watching TV or um, grandma or wherever they are, they have the TV on. So we just ask that it is turned off or the child has a quiet place to work. So our next set of um, habits, we want students to be proactive. That means they have control of themselves and no one can tell them what to do. You know, They know the expectations and they should be following them and sharpening the saw, which is habit number seven. 
Um, and so in order to follow those habits, they need to follow the directions the first time they are given, complete all of their assignments and do their personal best, pick up their items that um, don't belong to you and that's face-to-face -face and virtual. Use the restroom before class. And so virtually we know that children have access to the restrooms in their home, but we're asking that they please go to the restroom before um, they get on. And it's not like the teacher's gonna say, no, you can't leave the computer and go to the bathroom. But if they could take care of that, it would be very helpful so that they're not missing any instruction because the teachers only have them for a short period of time virtually as opposed to face to face. And also be mindful of their personal academic goals. You know, what is your goal for iReady? Are you trying to do more iReady during the week? Are you trying to get a head start on your projects? Are you trying to read more than 30 minutes every day? Are you trying to learn five extra sight words per week? Um, do you want to um, be able to recite a word for every alphabet of the letter of, as a younger student? Do you want to be able to give an object for each color? Um, do you want to be able to count objects in your home and add more to that number for the younger ages? So what is your personal academic goal? The students should have personal academic goals in each content area. If your child doesn't have that, um, parents, this is something that you could have a conversation with them. You know, okay, you know your alphabet. What do you want to extend from knowing your alphabet? Okay, you know your multiplication facts, um, one by one digits and two by two digits. Do you want to extend that to three by three digits or three by two digits? And what is your date that you wanna do that? And how are you gonna practice that? So each child should have a personal academic goal. And also no food or drinks during class sessions. We know sometimes in the morning, um, it, it could be a rush, you know, waking up students and getting them out of bed because now um, they're a little bit more relaxed because they're home. As opposed to being in school, you're more alert and awake because um, you know that you have to be up for school and sitting in your desk and you're attentive. But at home, you know, we've noticed parents bring a full breakfast <laughs> to the computer, you know, and we get it from time to time, but um, try to limit food and drinks because they're eating on screen and that's a, yet another distraction to other students. Also the computers, you don't want them to be ruined. And we've had some computers that I've had to replace because of water damage, liquid damage, um, because drinks were spilled on the computers and we don't want um, our computers to be damaged when that could be um, something um, that we don't have to deal with if children take a drink before and after class and not during instructional time. And so our last portion of our PBIS matrix is begin with the end in mind and put first things first. So we're asking students to raise their hand to talk and share. We know the little ones, sometimes they get overexcited, especially if there's a story about a teddy bear or a trip they took. We went to the beach, you know? I mean, that happens. You know, teachers aren't upset about that, but we just want them to be mindful and to raise their hands. Also share and take turns, use the right voice for the right task so everyone can learn. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with YouTube, there's this character on YouTube called Jeffy. So if you're familiar with Jeffy, parents, raise your hand. Jeffy is a YouTuber. He's like a puppet. And a lot of our students like Jeffy. And it's really our like fourth and fifth grade students that watch Jeffy. And he talks in this funny voice. And so sometimes the students will try to mimic that and um, use his voice in class. And so that's why we have this. And then bring all your needed materials. And so um, if you look at your teacher's Google Classrooms, they have slides and on one of the slides, normally it's the first slide, they will have for the younger students pictures of the items they need, or they will have written out the items that they need. And they will pull up that slide a little early um, and play some music for the students to see, oh, I need to go get my reading book. I need a pencil. I need some paper. And then during our, um, our, our material pickup day, some of the teachers created folders. So they'll tell the students to get a, a journal. They'll tell the students to get uh, one of their worksheets that they had in the folder. <clears throat> so that they can be prepared for that day. I know we have uh, 
Mrs. Scott, her child um, is back. They just came back from New Orleans. So I'll be in the school on Monday and be able to give you all of Jamari's items, okay? Um, so because he'll need his workbooks and all of that good stuff. Um, and so all of those materials, we wanna make sure that students have that so that they're not missing out on instruction. You know, oh, I have to go get my math workbook or I have to go get my reading workbook. And um, I had this conversation with both of our fourth grade classrooms yesterday. Um, because they found some extensions where they can chat in the chat box. And they've also found some extensions where um, they can freeze themselves on the screen and pretend as though something is wrong with their computer. Yes, parents, we have some future engineers and computer programmers. They are brilliant, smart little geniuses. They figure out everything. So we were thinking that the computers were breaking down, but this was an extension and they passed the word along. So they were freezing themselves on a computer like this, but nothing was wrong with the computer. It was an app they downloaded. And so um, they're so smart. Um, I tell you, they are brilliant. And we just have to be try, at least try to be three steps ahead of these kiddos. Um, as soon as we figure something out, out, they figure out something else. And so I had a discussion with them and explained to them, this is school. You know, you may be in front of a computer, but this is school and you need to treat it like school. Um, I said, I can't meet with you in my office, but I'll come to your house and knock on the door. And they were like, so yeah, that's how I will have to hold a meeting with you about your behavior is coming to your house um, because you can't come to the office. I'll have my mask on and we'll have to talk about it. And I know your mom and dad does not want me coming to their home and talking to them about something you've done in class. And they're like, no, no, don't come to my house. And they said, how do you have our address? I said, I have everyone's address. How do you think you're able to attend this school? I have everyone's address. It's in the system. Um, and so it was just, it was like a scare tactic. I'll call parents. Um, I won't necessarily come to the home unless I can't get in touch with someone over the phone. But I think the point was taken and um, we shouldn't have any issues for now um, in fourth grade, but no telling what else uh, those little brilliant minds will come up with next. And so the next one is no lying in the bed. Um, this right here is just to build a habit of work the mindset. When you're lying in the bed, what do you naturally do? You're relaxed. When you're lying in the bed, you are ready to go to bed. Um, your mind isn't thinking about work. Your mind isn't thinking about participating and focusing. And so we've noticed that some children are lying in the bed with their computer um, or they're lying in the bed up under the blankets and that shouldn't be so. And so um, I've emailed parents today and I've also put it on my global call this morning. Children should not be in bed. I am going into all of the Google classrooms and asking those students in bed to please get out of bed. Um, if you don't have a kitchen table to sit at, I'm asking them to at least find a pillow, sit on a pillow on the floor. You know, you can bend the pillow where it's on your back and on your bottom. Um, and so they can use their computer on their knees. Um, or to find a chair, but we do not want them lying in bed and also no watching TV. TV's off and only using the chat when asked by the teacher. So the teachers are able to turn off um, the chat during um, classroom instruction time. So any questions about our PBIS matrix um, or PBIS at Parkmore? All right. So I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of information about Title I. Um, thumbs up if you guys know how to use the reactions. It should be at the lower part. It says reactions, and you can click that. Give me a thumbs up if you're familiar with Title I, if you've ever heard Title I before. See, a few of you found the reactions button. All right. So every school in Columbus City Schools is a Title I school because it is a public school. So all public schools are Title I schools. The difference is that some Title I schools receive more money than others and it's based off of 
the social economic status of the students as well as enrollment. Okay, so schools in which children from low income families make up at least 40% of enrollment are eligible to use Title I funds to operate school wide programs that serve all children in school in order to raise the achievement of the lowest achieving students. And so there's so much research that shows that students who are from low social economic statuses, they may not have the same experience as other children whose parents um, may bring more money home. You know, when you make more money, your child is exposed to different experiences. You're able to, you know, take family trips. You're able to um, take family um, vacations. You're able to expose your children um, to the zoo or to the museum. Um, you're able to buy them more books and, you know, different things of that nature. You might live in a different neighborhood where they're exposed to different experiences that take place in the neighborhood. Um, they're also exposed to different lexicon, meaning different language, you know, um, if you if you're an educated parent and, and I'm not saying you have to have a college degree, but if you've graduated from high school, your your language is different, your conversation is different, your exposure to your student is different. Um, and so Title One funds are provided so that those children whose parents um, may not have or be able to provide those experiences, we are able to do so at the school level. Um, and so um, I believe um, to use my Title I funds, my secretary will tell you she's here, she could put it in the chat, I will spend every cent. By the end of the year, I only probably have maybe a dollar left. I spend every last dollar on my babies. So I use my Title I funds to purchase online learning platforms. So when you hear us talking about Reflex, I purchased that. Raz Kids, we purchased that. ABC Mouse, um, Flow Vocabulary, all of those online learning platforms we use our Title I dollars for. Student learning material. When we have those giveaways, if your child needs a folder, a pencil, a pencil sharpener, eraser, crayons, glue, whatever they need, I will buy it using the Title I funds. That's what the money is there for. Also field trips. We had a virtual field trip. Did your students tell you about it? We went to Africa. And so pre-K through fifth grade went to Africa. They took a field trip to Step Africa. So they learned about fraternities and sororities. And some of the teachers invited me in to talk about my sorority. If you guys didn't know, I am a Delta. And so I wore my jacket and I showed them some steps and so showed them some of my paraphernalia, but they were able to see all the different sororities and fraternities step. And they were able to see some individuals in South Africa step because that's where stepping originated in South Africa with the miners. And so uh, we will, Miss Burnett's class took a virtual field trip to the pig farm. Um, and so you will see that on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. In third and fourth grade, they had an author visit. Um, some of our, I think third and fifth grade will be taking a trip to the zoo. And so um, if you have any information about virtual field trips that you think would be great for our students, let me know. I just heard that Disney, I think we can take a virtual Disney field trip. So I will be checking that out. Um, because if we can go to Disney World, we're going to Disney World. So that's the good thing about virtual. We're able to do a lot of things, although we're not there, it's not tangible. We can't touch it, but we can still experience it. And then technology needs in the building. So super excited when we do come back. I've replaced a lot of our smart boards. So now a lot of our teachers have 65 inch flat screen clever touch boards. So you will see some new smart boards in our building. Um, both pre-K classrooms have new smart boards. First grade has new smart boards. Third grade has new smart boards. One of the fourth grade classrooms has a new smart board. Next, I'll be doing fifth grade, the other fourth grade room in kindergarten. So hopefully by the end of the year, the school will be totally outfitted in new 65 flat screens. Um, and then you guys know in our building, if you've been in there, um, I've also used my Title I dollars to um, purchase 45 inch flat screen TVs for every classroom. So we have smart TVs in every single one of our classrooms. Um, also, the classrooms that didn't get updated, Clever Touch, they have new furniture. So when our friends come back, 
just about, I think I put new furniture in every single classroom. Every classroom has new desks, tables, chairs, flexible seating. It's nice. It's nice. And so uh, when they come back, they'll be happy because they'll have some good things in their classroom. And then I also use my Title One dollars for parent programs. So um, if parents want to do workshops, Mrs. Lofton, if she could wave her hand, this is our family ambassador. So if she wants to do a program, I use Title One dollars to pay for that program. That's how we are able to serve dinner and get materials for our programs. Or if we want a special speaker to come in, we can pay our speaker using our Title One dollars. So the last thing I put on here, don't believe the hype. Title One schools are not bad schools because people, you know, try to put this negative connotation on a Title One school. That is not the case. If 40% of your students are eligible for free and reduced lunch, guess what? It's a Title I school. <laughs> and every single one of our schools, all of our students receive free and reduced lunch. So we are all Title I schools. Any questions about Title I? All right, so my last slide, how can we support you? Can we support you in academics? Do you need me to provide some information to parents? Do you need some more curriculum presentations? I know we did a, a writing presentation during our one of our weekly meetings, reading presentation. We've done something on math. Do you wanna see something else? Do you wanna see more field trips? Instructional material for you at home? Um, do you need more communication? If you're not following us, I do post. I try to post by 6.30 in the morning on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Sometimes I can be a little bit late depending on how I'm running at home. <laughs> um, but on Twitter, we're Parkmore Panthers. Facebook, we're Parkmore Panthers. And Facebook, we're Parkmore Panthers. Also our website, we try to keep that up to date. We also have a Parkmore Panther Google page. So if you're not follow, if you're not um, a part of that, I wanna give you the code. It's T F X B P seven X and I'll put it in the chat because a lot of you are um, a part of our parent Google Panther page. And I do update on that page weekly, if not daily. So you would just go to Google Classrooms, click join, type in that code, and you would be a part of our Google Panther page. So those are some topics I've added. So at this time, I will take questions and suggestions, and I will stop talking and listen to you. Oh, thank you for asking, Ms. Lofton. I'm so excited to share this information. She said, what has our attendance rate been for this quarter? So our attendance rate has gone up at the beginning of the year, probably to about October. Our attendance rate was 63%. We have now gone up to close to 89%. So we are going up with attendance. And it wasn't that our students weren't attending class. It was that it was very hard for parents to adjust to logging into the parent portal. And that's something else because that parent portal code is like 50, 11 letters and numbers long. <laughs> sometimes it was working, sometimes it wasn't working, you know, and then you forget, you know? And so it's, it's just something we had to get used to. And now all of our parents are used to logging in. The majority of our parents is just getting, um, some of our lower grades, our pre-K parents, getting them adjusted with the parent portal. So they'll get their child onto class, but logging into the parent portal is a big deal. So um, any suggestions, any questions, I am ready to take notes. Um, it's still a lot. Um, just, everything just trying to keep up with everything get on to all the extra stuff like reflux and um stuff like that um just trying to keep them engaged like i like i'm literally sitting on top of my kids right now because they have just tapped out with the online stuff so i have to stay with them and kind of hold their hand to keep them encouraged they're doing well um because of that, um, but it's 
it's it's a lot to have them in school in your home and um, COVID and death and life and and just everything. Period. It's it's a lot overwhelming. And I thank you for bringing up that point, because if you recall, during our last parent meeting, we talked about the social emotional support. So something that I've implemented in my home, um, we have a game night and we have movie night. And so uh, we do movie night every Friday and I allow Chelsea to select the movie and then we do game night at least twice a week. So I purchase some games, my card. I allow her to teach me some games. I learned a new game, Trash. So I love playing Trash. <laughs> so um, Uno, um, and also just having conversations with, with your child. And then another thing, some of her favorite YouTubers, I've started watching some of her favorite YouTubers with her, just spending that time with them, that connection, just so, know, so they know that you are there. Um, and then have a cutoff time have a cutoff time, you know, in our house, we're done at five o'clock, you know, we're not turning on a computer, you, you don't have your phone, my daughter does not have her phone until the weekend, um, because you are already on the computer all week, and so just implementing some of those things, and then doing those touch points every day, how are you feeling, you know, and, and be honest with me, how are you feeling right now, and then also carving out a schedule. Okay, if we're in class from nine to 11, and then you have a break from 11 to one, allow that to be a break. That is a break. We go outside, we go for a walk, you ride your bike, you ride your skateboard. When there's snow outside, you make a snowman. I'm gonna make you lunch. If you're older, you're able to prepare your own lunch. Maybe um, you guys can create a menu on Sunday evenings and um, the older sibling can prepare lunch for everybody. You know, they can take turns preparing lunch. Maybe one day you prepare lunch, the older sibling prepare lunch, the younger sibling prepares lunch. The younger sibling might do some applesauce and grapes, but they prepare lunch for everybody. <laughs> so, um, you know, doing some fun things like that or maybe creating an activity calendar. Um, my daughter and I, we did a bucket list. We did a bucket list and we cross off every time we do something different on a bucket list, some things on there I really don't wanna do. Like I had to make a TikTok. But I made a TikTok because that made her happy. So you will see Miss Campbell on TikTok. <laughs> so um, just those those small things that <clears throat> you don't they don't cost money, but they make your child happy. You know, um, baking cookies, making a cake. You know, making brownies, um, calling someone out of town, and and having that conversation with them just to break up the monotony of just being at home all the time okay. and seeing that same person all the time. And then with iReady, I talked to the students about setting a timer. iReady is only 20 to 30 minutes for reading and 20 to 30 minutes for math every day. And the reason why they have to do iReady because this is the progress test that the district is giving. So they give it at the beginning of the year and then again at the middle of middle of the year. So they'll be taking their middle of the year iReady test in January. When we come back after winter break, they'll be taking that test. So we wanna make sure that they're doing their iReady because if not, they won't be prepared fully for the middle of the year assessment. And that's what I explained to them. Reflex is as assigned by the teacher. And so second grade is winning um, for reflex. And what reflex <clears throat> does, it's a, um, how can I put it? It's like an ongoing practice of math facts, building that foundation of addition and subtraction and multiplication, getting those basic facts down so that they are able, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have a frog in my throat getting those basic math facts down so that they are able to complete um, the two by two math um, assignments, the two by two addition and subtraction and multiplication, and then eventually moving into division. And so that's what Reflex is just that ongoing math practice. And that's just second through fifth grade, not pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade. Also, um, the classwork, if you notice the teacher sometimes put a due date 
or they will not put a due date. Most of the times they won't put a due date and that's because they're giving them all week to complete the classwork assignments. And I know that some of the parents didn't know on Google Meet, you have your stream. The stream is the very first screen that you see. And when you scroll through the stream, uh, matter of fact, um, I showed you guys this during one of our parent meetings. The stream will show you all of the updates um, that the teacher has, but next to the stream is classwork. And so when you click on classwork, it will have all of the assignments that the students need to complete. But also the teachers have gone a step further. Most of our teachers have a Bitmoji classroom where you can go in. And um, Shantae, that's where some of those fun activities are, you know, where the story will read to them or they may have a YouTube video that may go over some math facts or might have a cartoon character that may go over some science activities. Um, and something else you can implement at home, you can have science Saturdays um, because we really shouldn't be out and about. We're in the purple. So um, this time more than ever, we need to, you know, become a, creative, <laughs> you know, um, I've asked Chelsea to be careful in my kitchen um, because they try to find different things to do, you know, different ways to make slime and um, different ways to do various activities um, at home. They can Google different activities, do different science experiments. Um, and that's what it's all about. And, and this right here is a time where they can learn even more um, because they're at home and they're able to explore. And now if, if you guys need material to do different things, let me know. Um, at the school now, we have our Joanne donations. And in, that, in those boxes, there were some egg drop activities um, and different science activities that students can do. Amazon, some really good things you can purchase for Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. Um, or if not, if you don't celebrate Christmas, Amazon has some really cheap science activities for under $15. Like you can do electricity with a potato, with a lemon. Um, so they have a lot of nice things that you can do in the kitchen um, as far as science is concerned. Uh, one thing I'm trying to get Chelsea to learn are all, all of the states, all 51 states. And so um, that takes some time to learn the states, also learning the continents. You can purchase a globe and you know do some globe experience ex globe exercises you know go find africa you know go find antarctica um go find the pacific ocean different things of that nature you know just to break up the monotony in your home um if, if you still own any of those old britannica encyclopedias i know some people may have thrown those out um but those are great tools for your students to use um, I know sometimes Chelsea likes to just explore the dictionary. I don't know. She just want to use big words. So she'll explore the dictionary. And so um, those are some different ways to break that up because it is draining. I can't tell you how much I get Zoom drained. I'm Zooming in the morning. I'm Zooming in the afternoon. I'm Zooming and, you know, I'm in a meeting with, um, the principals for the district and then I'm in the Google Meets on my iPad, you know, or I have another laptop. I left my other laptop at the school. So sometimes I'm operating on four different um, technology tools and I'm like, this is getting out of control. <laughs> this is out of hand. You know, this is, when is it going to stop? But I know it's our reality for right now. Um, and, and it can be hard, especially on students because they need that socialization. They need to be able to see their friends. And so I've been talking to our family ambassador about hosting a, a dance. We, we wanna do a Zoom, but guess what? We gotta do it on Zoom. So <laughs> her husband is a DJ and I just wanna do like, um, just have a dance on Zoom. Everybody just dancing in their living room, having a good time, but, but we're gonna have to figure out some ways for our children to, um, to have fun in a different type of way. And um, some of the children did want to do, have lunch with Miss Campbell. So um, I want to implement that where they are able to have lunch with me and join me on my, um, join me on my Google Meet or maybe even Zoom. I'll give, they can use this Zoom and we can have lunch together. <laughs> they need a time. Um where they could um, talk with their classmates. You know, they don't get to see their classmates. 
So when they get on, it's um, be quiet, sit down, be still, you know, don't do this, don't do that, no talking, I'm not, you know, no questions right now. And they just need a time um, during class or during the day, it doesn't have to be every day, where they could just talk over each other, just be loud, just socialize, be free for a little bit, because they, it's their only interaction with their classmates. And it's always so structured. I know it's school, but they need that time where they can just, you know, be free and it can be loud for a little bit and then, you know, just shut it down. Cause they, you know, they always have their hands raised and they want to talk to someone and, you know, just say hi, just a, just the time they could just be them with, you know, no, really no, I mean, not saying no rules, but, you know, just be free to conversate with your classmates, you know, just to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely- Some kids are at home with no kids, like your kid, they yeah. need that outlet. Yeah. My I son, totally I, agree. I have a son. I have a son that goes to Gables and their his teacher leaves the Zoom open from when they're on lunch break so they can eat lunch with one another. And then on Fridays, she gives them, like they can still meet to ask her questions, but they can also talk to one another. And then on Fridays, she um, allows them to just have them time at starting at 2.40. And then they can go until the end of the, you know, to the end of the day where they could just talk to one another. And um, sometimes she'll even let them do it before class. If they log on early, she lets them like just have their time. And then they know at not at nine o'clock it's time to start. Um, so, and he looks forward to it. He's like, mom, I got to log on. My friend's going to be on. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, go log on. You know, so it gives them that outlet it does it really does and it helps him connect still with his friends because he's like Aiden's going on mom I'm like okay go go log on you know so then um he does look forward to it and I think it really helps him so it does and third fourth and fifth grade they actually do that so if you have a third fourth or fifth grader they do leave theirs open um they leave it open in the morning and they leave it open during lunch uh, Ms. Kam- Ms. Kamicha just said that Ms. Schatzneider does leave hers open. Um, and so I um, want to make sure that I do convey this to all of the teachers because I think that's a great idea. You know, um, one of the teachers said that the students were using the chat inappropriately when they left it open because the teachers have to do things in their house, you know, maybe go prepare something for their own kids because, um, you know, some teachers are able to do that because they don't have any little ones at home. So they're able to just grab them something out of the fridge and come back and leave their theirs open. But we, we have a mixed <laughs> group of teachers at my school. I have some with little ones. I have some with babies, newborn babies. And then I have some with children who are grown, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and have their own families. <laughs> so um, I try to be mindful when I make requests, but I think that's a great idea because I think all of them, could at least open up their rooms 15 minutes early. And also um, during the lunch hour, open it up for at least 30 minutes so the children um, can have that time. And so the school counselor, that's a great idea. Um, Kim, he is starting Moiler Mondays and that will begin on this Monday, but that will only be for the students who are having some some issues, they are, they're now in tier two of PBIS because we share him with another school. So we only have him twice a week and another school has him three days a week. So we have to utilize him um, when we're able to, and he's going to open up from 1150 to 1250 on Mondays and teachers will make referrals for those students. And that's why I'm going to start doing the open lunch time um, to give students a gift. Oh, Jesus. I was just like, think I do see that. I was like, you know, because I'm weak. <laughs> to, give, to give the children a chance to talk because that is important, you know. Um, there are some students who are um, at other schools depressed, depressed. Um, at the high school level, I've been hearing a lot of suicidal thoughts um, because they're looking at social media and comparing themselves to other kids through the computer. 
Um, and so that's why I'm saying it is so important. It's detrimental that we check in with our children often. And so um, I'll probably start doing the open lunches, try to do it at least three times a week. Um, but when they call me to meetings, it's, it's sometimes hard, but I can do it at least 1150 to 1250 for our lunch hours. Um, and they would just join me on the Zoom. Um, for that. Anything? Hi, Ms. Campbell. Hi. Um, I just have a question. Well, um, so Caden, um, when it comes to iReady, he gets uh, computer fatigue like real easily. And I know it's supposed to be like 20 minutes. Is there a way to pause where he's at in iReady so he can like take a break and come back? Because I've tried it before and it'll make, it'll take him all the way back to like the beginning. So what it is, is an ability test. So if he hasn't completed the module or the activity mm -hmm. that was assigned to him, it will take him back to the beginning. So, but you okay. can pause it as opposed to closing it out. Okay. So you can just pause his session at that time, give him like a brain break and then have him go back to complete the session. And he can do, he can do that as many times as he need, needs to do. Okay. Yeah, because it won't count against him if you pause it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I think I have two more things in the chat. So clubs. That is a great idea. So we talked about the clubs for Leader and Me and how we could do those virtually. Um, and so it's kind of difficult <laughs> to do the clubs virtually um, because you need the materials at your home to do the clubs. I mean, we could easily do like a chess club because you can access that. You can do a chess uh, game virtually. You can do game club because they could play games virtually. They could do yoga club or exercise club. So we could do clubs like that. Um, but beyond those various um, types of clubs, you couldn't get into like science club if a student doesn't have the materials at home. You couldn't do puzzle club if they don't have puzzles and sewing club and, you know, those cooking clubs like we had face to face. And so we just tabled the clubs until we come back face to face. Um, but if that's something that the students they're wanting, then maybe we can try to do something like during the after school hours, you know, maybe picking something to do each day, just so that they can have something fun to do. Um, maybe from that 315 to four o'clock hour, we can try to do something, you know, um, I'm not savvy in chess, but I can do games. <laughs> I can do, you know, um, I know the kids, they love to do the stepping um, and things like that. So that those types of activities we can definitely do. So I'll write that down. And what I can do just came to me, I can ask the teachers who would like to do a club from 315 to four and maybe put some options out there because if my teachers don't want to do it then maybe some of my instructional assistants would like to do it um the different clubs so you can easily do a reading club um chess club or miss campbell or just um something like i don't know the hangout Mm -hmm. where kids can just come and I don't know, just like I was saying, they might want to talk or share a story or like we're doing on here now after the meeting, just an outlet, just having a discussion. I think it would be good. I mean, especially for your older kids um, who like under really understand what's going on or in their feelings going through puberty and can say like, you know, I feel this way and come to find out like you have a lot of other students who have that in common and it's like you're not alone and then kind of like make that connection with another student and maybe you know they can communicate on the side on the phone facetime you know or whatever okay. 
All right, any other questions, suggestions? Anything at all? So I'm gonna stop recording.